The medulla or medulla oblongata is one of the three sections that make up the brainstem. Of the three sections that make up the brainstem, it is the most inferior and is continuous with the pons above and the spinal cord below. The medulla has many important features and functions. It is a conduit for many essential ascending and descending nerve tracts. It houses the sentence that control vital functions of the body, such as heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure, and also contains the nuclei of four cranial nerves. Let's focus on the external anatomy of the medulla, focusing on the anterior surface. So this is the anterior surface of the medulla. At the midline, you'll find the anterior median fissure, which is continuous along the length of the spinal cord. As you move lateral from the midline, there are two sulci, the ventrolateral sulcus and the posterolateral sulcus. You can find the pyramids here. The pyramids are composed of bundles of motor fibers, which make up the corticospinal tract. The olives also appear as a pair of swellings, like olives you eat. However, they are located lateral of the pyramids. The olives contain the olivary nuclei, which play an important role in movement, coordination, and movement-related learning. Posterior to the olives are the inferior cerebellar peduncles, which connect the medulla to the cerebellum. The ventrolateral sulcus and the posterolateral sulcus also have cranial nerves coming out of them. At the medulla, the cranial nerves to remember are cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12, so the last four. Now let's look at the external anatomy of the medulla on the posterior surface, so the back of the medulla. In order to appreciate the posterior surface of the medulla, the cerebellum, which normally connects to the back of the medulla, part of it, must be removed. Like the anterior surface of the medulla, the posterior surface also has a midline structure. This is called the posterior median sulcus. This is continuous below as the posterior median sulcus of the spinal cord. The posterior median sulcus conveys sensory input from most things below the neck, including the viscera. Lateral from the midline, you find the gracilis tubercle and the cuneate tubercle. The gracilis and cuneate tubercle contains essentially tracts that carry sensory information from the periphery to the brain, mainly touch information. That was the external anatomy of the medulla. Now let us focus on the internal anatomy. In order to understand the internal structures of the medulla, we are going to view the medulla in cross sections. And we are going to discuss the internal anatomy by discussing three levels of the medulla. These are level of decussation of the pyramids, level of decussation of the medial lemonisci, level of the olives and inferior cerebellar peduncles. Some also say there's a fourth level just below the pons, but we won't discuss that. Firstly, we will discuss the most distal level of the medulla which is the level of decussation of the pyramids. This level is then continuous with the spinal cord. Now, the level of decussation of the pyramids, as the name suggests, in this level is the major decussation point of the descending motor fibers because the pyramids carry your motor fibers from your brain to your periphery. Now, decussation essentially means when the motor nerve fibers travel and move from one side to the other. So for example, from the left to the right or from the right to the left, decussating. Within this level, you can also find sensory tracts as well, such as the spinocerebellar tract, which carry unconscious proprioceptive information, or the lateral spinothalamic tract, which carries information about temperature and pain to the brain. 
There's also spinal tract for cranial nerve 5. Next, we will discuss the level of decussation of the medial lemoniscus. In this level, we have the major decussation point of the medial lemoniscal fibers, the great sensory decussation. The medial lemoniscal tract carries sensory information of touch and vibration along the posterior spinal cord to the medulla before the sensory fibers traveling from the spinal cord synapse with fibers at the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. The fibers from the nuclear gracilis and cuneatus then decussate at this level. So moving from one side to the other side before moving up to the brain stem and traveling through to the thalamus and then to the sensory cortex in the brain. Again, decussation means move the nerve fibers moving from one side of the body to the other. So from the right side to the left side. The other sensory tracts include the spinocerebellar tract and the lateral spinothalamic tract, as well as a spinal tract for cranial nerve number five, just as before. We also have the motor tracts at this level because remember the motor fibers are traveling within the pyramids but they will decussate in the level below. There are nuclei at this level which include the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus which we mentioned. There's a continuation of the spinal nucleus for cranial nerve 5, the accessory nucleus and the hypoglossal nucleus which carries cranial nerve number 12. Lastly, we will discuss the level of the olives and inferior cerebellar peduncles. Now this level is very structurally different, both externally and internally, compared to the previous two levels. Firstly, at this level, the central canal has expanded into the fourth ventricle, making this region the open medulla. At this level, the inferior cerebellar peduncles will join the brainstem to the cerebellum. The motor tracts will travel through the pyramids just like before, and they'll keep going down towards the level of the decussation of the pyramids. There are sensory tracts here, including the medial longitudinal fasciculus tract, tectospinal tract, the spinocerebellar tract, and the lateral spinothalamic tract. Spinal tract for cranial nerve 5. Important nuclei at this level include the olivary nucleus, glossopharyngeal nucleus, vagal nucleus, continuation of the spinal nucleus of cranial nerve 5, continuation of the hypoglossal nucleus, which is your cranial nerve 12. So those were the important levels of the medulla oblongata. From the top, that was the levels of the olives, the level of the medial lemoniscal decussation, and then the level of the pyramid decussation for the motor tracts. Now, there are other important centers. So remember, the medulla is the house for the nuclei of cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12. The medulla also contains many other centers that are important for controlling vital functions of the body, such as the heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. The respiratory center is a group of nuclei that are located in the pons and the medulla oblongata. And then you have the vasomotor center, which is important in controlling blood pressure. This also lies within the medulla oblongata and is responsible for collecting, you know, information from the body, which can then influence heart rate and everything else. Now, the blood supply or the vasculature of the medulla is complex and is dependent on the level being viewed, but essentially it includes the vertebral arteries, which you know come up from branches of the aortic arch, 
the posterior spinal artery, the anterior spinal artery, and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now, all that information we have learned about the medulla oblongata, the external, the internal, the important nuclei, as well as the blood supply, is important to understand some medullary lesion syndromes, which will be discussed in a separate video. So in summary, the medulla oblongata is part of the brainstem and is continuous with the spinal cord below. There are three main levels, which include from the very top, the level of the olives. Below that is the level of decussation of the medial and meniscal tract, which carries sensory information to the brain. And then below that, you have the level of the decussation of the pyramids, which is the decussation of the motor tracts from the brain to the peripheries. Thank you for watching.